Okay, in this problem we're going to look at a kind of classic example uh, with forces and pulleys where we have two masses and one is on some kind of surface uh, and the other one's hanging over the edge. So let's go ahead and go through this problem. We have two masses connected by a frictionless pulley as shown and M1 is on a surface with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.18. And if M1 has a mass of 10 kilograms and M2 has a mass of 12 kilograms, uh, what are the acceleration of the masses and the tension in the rope? So we have mass 1 here, and it has a mass of 10 kilograms. And mass 2 is 12 kilograms. And then we know the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.18. So friction on this surface up here that mass 1 is on. So there are a couple of things that we can just say immediately about this problem. In a situation like this where the masses are connected by this string, um, the tension for both of them and the acceleration for both of them are the same. So we don't have to have a T1 and an A1 and A2 and T2. So these are going to be the same, the same magnitude for both. Tension obviously is going to be in opposite directions for the two masses. So there's this, and then we have this issue with the coordinate system. It's a little weird in this type of problem. So normally you have a coordinate system with an X and Y axis, right? And if you have a mass like mass 1, you're going to assume that the, the coordinate axis that the rope is along is going to be x, the horizontal direction. And then for mass 2, you're going to assume that it has the tension in the y direction, right? Going up instead of side to side. But with this type of problem, since they are connected, the easiest way to think of this is to imagine that the rope is the kind of x-axis here. So just imagine you have this x-axis that just kind of turns at this point and continues on through both masses. And here at mass 1, you've got direction to the right as the positive x-axis, and you have the negative x-axis for m1 to the left. Uh, and then for m2, you just kind of have to follow this rope down and imagine that the positive x-axis is downward. So positive in the downward direction, and then upward is actually the negative x-axis. <laughs> If you were to pull mass 2 up, you'd have something that looks more like this, m1, m2. So we just have to kind of think uh, outside of the way we normally think, where just imagine them kind of straightened out and think about which way the forces are acting here. So positive direction and negative direction. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all of this. All right, and now what we're going to do is just find the acceleration. So let's go ahead and first draw the forces that are acting along this axis here. So we're going to have tension for mass 1 pointing to the right. And then we have friction for mass 1. pointing to the left, so in the negative direction. Um, we do know that there is going to be a weight here. Um, it's, our mass 1 isn't moving in the y direction at all, but our weight is mg, and that will be important when we're figuring out the friction. And of course, there's a normal force acting on m1 as well. Now for m2, there are only going to be two forces acting. We have the weight which is in what we are referring to as the positive x direction. Weight, mg. And we have the tension of the cord, which is the same magnitude but different direction 
as the tension in the cord for mass one. So these are only two are the only two uh, forces acting on M2, and these two masses again are accelerating together. So let's go ahead and set up the force equations for both of these. So mass one. So we know the sum of our forces in this x direction here is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So the sum of our forces here are going to be tension in the positive direction and then minus the force of friction. And that equals mass times our acceleration, which again is in the x direction. And I should put mass one here. This is specific to mass one. So the tension, we don't know the actual value of this. So I'm just going to leave that as T. Now our friction force is going to be mu K, so the coefficient of kinetic friction, times the normal force, which is the opposite of the weight Mg, M1G. And this is equal to M1 times A. I'm just going to write this as A. There is only one acceleration here, and the direction is the same for both. So just to simplify it, I'm writing A. OK, so this is our force equation for mass 1. Now, we don't know T and we don't know A, but we're going to have our force equation for mass 2, where we're also going to have the tension and the acceleration. So that's going to give us two equations and two unknowns so that we can solve for both. So for mass 2, we're going to have the sum of our forces equals mass times acceleration. Uh, again, these are in what we're calling the x-direction for mass 2. So we're going to have the weight for m2, which is what we're considering the positive direction. So that's weight for 2, uh, and then minus the tension. So the tension is going backward along this way for mass 2. So that's the negative direction, and then weight is in the positive direction, the direction of our acceleration here. Okay, and so this is equal to mass times, ex or mass 2 times acceleration. So let's just go ahead and plug in m2g minus t equals m2a. All right, so let's go ahead and just solve for the tension, since that's easy, and plug it into our other equation. So using what we have on the right here, our tension then is just going to be equal to m2g minus m2a. Okay, so now we can plug what we have for the tension into this equation here. So I'm going to need to make some room. All right, so we're just plugging this term in for our tension over here. So we have m2g minus m2a. A, and then we're going to our friction force mu k m1 g is equal to m1 a. Okay, now we have one equation with only one unknown, which is the acceleration. So let's get both terms with the acceleration to one side. Leaves us with m2 g minus mu k m1 g equals M1A plus M2A. So what we're going to do is just solve for A by pulling A out of this term, M1A plus M2A, and then dividing both sides by that M1 plus M2. Right? So that's going to give us A is equal to m2g minus mu k m1g divided by m1 plus m2. So now let's plug in the values that were given for each of these variables. So a, our acceleration, is going to be m2, which is 12 kilograms times g, 9.8, minus 0 0.18, times m1, times 
times g divided by m1 plus m2 And that's going to give us an acceleration of 4.5 meters per second squared. So we found our acceleration. And now we want to find the, the tension. And this is actually just going to be a lot easier because we already have that equation set up. We can just use this equation here now that we have the acceleration and find our tension. So then tension is equal to m2, which is 12 kilograms times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, minus m2, which is 12 kilograms, times the acceleration, which we just found. And this is going to give us that the tension is 64 newtons. So this is our tension and our acceleration. So really, we're just solving a system of two equations with two unknowns. So hopefully that was helpful, and you can better understand how to, how to manage these kind of pulley equations. Um, it's actually easier when the other one is not on a surface with friction on it. But I think the important thing to take away is that with these types of problems, when you, these two masses are connected, um, our tension and our acceleration are going to be the same. And you have to think about this cord that's attaching it as almost the axis that you have to work with here. So hopefully that was helpful, and let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to see. And thanks for watching.